Hi, um, this is Eric. I am a premier counselor at Ivy Wise, a former admission officer at Columbia, and assistant director of admission at the New School. Hi everyone, I'm Mike. I am a master counselor at Ivy Wise, and I was a former admission officer at Stanford University. We are here to talk to you about the exciting Common Application. <laughs> the Common Application is this one consolidated application that goes out to, I think, close to a thousand schools in um, the U.S. now. But you'll have to be mindful that the Common Application is probably the most uh, common um, application that you'll see. But sometimes if you're in a state that has its own specific um proprietary application, like maybe the University of Te Texas system or University of California system, those will be separate and those are things that you'll do in addition to the Common Application, should you be applying to those colleges. So what's the beginning of the Common App, Mike? Well, the beginning of the Common App is the, I think it's called the Personal Information section. So it's your name, address, phone number, email, and then there'll also be a section on your family background because the colleges they do want to see the context environment you were raised in. So they want to see that information, your parents, family members, uh, siblings, um, and to get a better picture of your, your environment. So the next part I think is that they talk about your academic information. And that's one of the more time intensive parts of the application with the exception of the essay. So you're gonna have to report your grades, um, tell them the grading system at your school. And just remember that again, the common application captures information so that they can understand you within the context of your school. So if your school ranks, you'll put your class rank. If they don't, you'll put that your school doesn't rank. Your GPA will be determined by the way that your school determines GPA. So that could be a 100 point scale, that might be a four point scale, sometimes it's a five or a nine point scale. And then there are even um, some schools that still just have narrative based reviews. So the common application is very inclusive and you'll just have to really make sure that you're tailoring it specifically to your background and academic experience. Part of that is like the uh, like the test scores as well, right? Yeah. So um, if you do decide to um, show your test scores, um, if you don't, then you're not going to obviously list that SAT, ACT, and um, you know you just have to make sure you look at the requirements of the school in terms of if they allow super scoring for the SAT or ACT, AP, IB scores. That's also part of that um, academic kind of profile section of the application. Um, I also wanted to mention the fact that the College Board and ACT are completely separate from the common application. So even though they will ask for your testing history, you'll also need to send your official test scores from the testing agencies to the colleges to which you apply. Those are not considered official if you just self-report. Self the next section that comes to mind for me is the um, uh, honors and awards and the extracurriculars. So the common application, um, they only allow you to list uh, five honors and awards. So you have to be mindful of, um, you know, if you have more than five, you have to figure out which which ones I'm the most proud uh, to, to show to the college. Obviously, there's other parts where you can list that, but that's where we're going to look for your honors and awards. Um, so there might be school-based, something, you you know, what you want, like state at DECA, or you want, um, you know, national debate tournaments, and you might put that on there. And then the extracurricular section only allows you to put 10 extracurriculars. I know that's a painful for a lot of uh, over-involved high school <laughs> students, so this is where you have to figure out which are those most cherished extracurriculars. Also remember that um, I deal with a lot of students who actually don't have many or any honors and awards. And if that's you, that's okay, because not every school is like that everyone's a winner, right? Some schools don't have the honor roll or the dean's list. Um, some students I've worked with, like they get really bent out of shape because they don't have any of those honors or awards. And if you fall into that camp, don't worry. There's still a lot of other things that the application will capture that can you know, make you look it's not that you have to look impressive, but they can capture, you know, a more holistic review of who you are. So what's the next section? Mm, <laughs> I don't have a common application in front of me, so <laughs> um, I think that there is a colleges tab. So you have to, yeah, you have to right. list yeah, the colleges yeah. that you're actually applying to that are on the common application, and that will help with your own organization. So in the colleges tab, you'll need to find the schools uh, by manually searching, and then they get added to your application list. And what is helpful about that is then you can expand 
that college, I think on the left-hand toolbar, I've now seen thousands of applications <laughs> in my time. So I realized like how much of photographic memory I have with it. Um, that's where the supplements will uh, reside. And then um, you'll see, you know, the Family and Education Rights to Privacy Act, um, the FERPA, you know, there's a lot of acronyms coming your way. And uh, those are housed in the common application as well. So you'll want the college list in um, Common App to mirror whatever list you're working off of in your school's, you know, software platform. And that might be Naviance is very common. Score is becoming increasingly common. Cialfo uh, is also another platform. And there may be others out there, but those two things will usually talk to one another. Shall we talk about the common application personal statement? <laughs> I'm sure the audience wants to know. Okay, so <laughs> the common application personal statement, or becoming affectionately called the CAPS, I don't call it that, but it is. <laughs> um, it's the 650-word um, maximum uh, essay that you're going to write that, again, will go out to all the colleges who accept the common application. So that's one main essay that students really do agonize over, honestly, because I think that they think they have to have something really profound, really grand, um, this really compelling story that they need to communicate with colleges. I'm here to tell you that I think I would take down that sort of like amplified idea of what it needs to be and just make it a little bit more simple. Um, I found the most effective personal st statements are those that tell me something extra about the reader that I couldn't glean from the other parts of the application. And another sort of maxim that I use with my students is they're going to want the, um, you know, admissions officers are going to want the application pieces to be complementary rather than redundant. So if you spoke about an activity in the activity section or you're getting a letter of recommendation from a music teacher, you don't necessarily need to then like enumerate all of your activities again in the common application personal statement because they just saw it. The personal statement is really a, your one opportunity to tell your own story because um, you know, the college is going to look at all, like, your extracurriculars, your, your grades, but that personal statement is where you can really say, this is who I am, and this is how I'm different from everyone else. But you're also going to feel like you're not different from everybody yeah. else, and that is <laughs> not true, and I know it's a hard thing to understand, but, again, having read probably thousands or tens of thousands of applications between the two of us, um, it still is highly individualized. One thing that I can say to avoid is it being over sort of overwrought, right, a lot, too much adult intervention on the essay to where it becomes very bland. Another trap that I think students fall into is that they feel like they have to be so impressive in the personal statement that it's so serious that it reads almost like a, you know, research paper. And I already know you're impressive if your grades are strong and you're taking hard classes. So you don't need to prove yourself to me in the common application personal statement. Let that be an opportunity to help me learn something about you again that's a little bit more personal and then my other red flag which i see a lot is it does not need to be too florid or descriptive in its language so i approached the podium with sweat beating down my brow the bright lights coming at my face you know as you prepare for your student council president speech like don't do that it's very annoying <laughs> I, I had a student do that about getting a haircut it was very dramatic the and scissors came it, it out was, my, no, I the think blade grazed my ear. The really hated it. it. It was, yeah. So I think just um, find your authenticity and your humanness and really um, lead with that, at least from, from my perspective. Absolutely. And so then once you've sort of arrived at a, you know, scaffolding for your common application personal statement, you'll want to move on to the supplements which are going to be very different from school to school. Um, again, you'll find them housed in the common application and you can also get them from the school's website, but you'll notice that schools will have from zero to 10 supplements. I mean, really depending on the college in varying word counts as well. So I find uh, most often some of the larger public schools may not have supplements. Um, maybe they have one that's about why our school. Can you think of a few like common supplemental questions that students might want to think about? Yeah, one is like, why do you want to come to? Uh, why do you want? Why are you interested in our college? What are your academic interests? And explain how it's grown over time. There might be one around um, community. How have you contributed to community? How we contribute to our community? Um, what I'm sure myself. Yeah, no, those are a few that really come to mind pretty easily. Yeah. I think that it's pretty common to 
um, get these kind of rambling supplements too, like the community or identity one is that it's really common, but oftentimes it's, it's like comment on your, you know, origin or background, sexuality, religion, um, neighborhood, you know, or another community that you belong to. And I think students get a little um, nervous about that. And I always say like, that's an or, 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 not an and, 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 and. So like pick one of those communities and then really dive into it. Um, the Why Our School essay, I think, is another one that seems um, deceptively simple, but it's really important that you do research that's not superficial about the school in order to be able to communicate to the college why is it that you actually want to attend and why that school is well-suited for your academic needs and what you might bring to the community as well. Um, and then you get the little like corny popcorn supplements, I call them, where it's like, what music, you know, what song do you want us to be listening to when you we read your application? Or like, what's your hashtag? Or something like that. I think it's honestly people my age trying to be like down with the kids. <laughs> like, I think that they're really corny, but you are going to encounter them, right? So um, it's important to just know like the volume of writing that you're going to have to do. Supplements do tend to be shorter, but not always. Um, so sizing up that entire volume before you get into the fall, I think it's really important just to know if it's going to be manageable. I think that's a good nuts and bolts start to the common application, so good luck. Again, my name is Eric, and admissions counselor at Ivy Wise, and, and I'm Mike. Thanks. thanks so much for joining us. All right, see you next time. Bye. Bye.